search Ultra Trader. The Ford Ranger is one of those vehicles that can do just about anything. You're gonna find them on construction sites, you're gonna find them on mines, you're gonna find them doing the school run and in office parks. You're also gonna find them out and about where people are having fun. The Ranger Wild Track is the leisure vehicle in the lineup. It is the one that you want if you go out to the dam, if you go out to the mountain bike trail, if you go riding with your mates, if you're spending a day on the water, this is the one that you take. Ford has changed up the look of the new Ranger, brought it in line with their global truck design language. It's really squared off, it's really boxy, and it makes me think of that F-150 that we don't get, but has a really cool look to it. It's very American in its approach, and I like that. It's got these big headlights that are C-shaped. It looks a bit like somebody else's logo, but I can't quite pick out who. They're complemented by these LED daytime running lights, also in a C-shape. And it's a C-shape because there's the strong bar through the trapezoidal grille that presses into them. The bright work, the chrome, is largely gone, and it's replaced with this gunmetal attention piece. Down at the bottom, you're going to get dual recovery points, and that's great if you're going off-road and you're needing to use a variety of snatch straps. Wild track models roll on 18-inch alloy wheels. And down the side, well, it's more of the same. Flat, squared off, boxy. But it retains this crease that lets you know it's a Ranger. Wild tracks, of course, get this style sport bar here, finished off in that same anthracite color. And then we've got this step, which allows you to well, get into the back, right here into the load bin, which is larger than on the previous Ranger. When we move around the back, we're going to see that the tail lights complement those headlights, and they've got these C-shaped elements in them, just like the daytime running lights. There's the pressed Ranger into the tailgate and this integrated wing element. If we open up here, you'll see that the Wild Track has this bin liner. Of course, this is off a work surface, cup holders, measuring tape, clamping points, the usual deal. And then there's power outlets in here with 400 watts of power, both three pin and cigarette lighter. This one, well, has an electric roller shutter on it with lighting that lets you see what you're doing in here. In fact, it has what's known as zone lighting. And zone lighting will allow you to switch on through the infotainment system, lighting off to the sides or the back or the front of the vehicle. And this helps when you're out camping and you haven't set your tent up yet. And that's what the Ranger Wild Track is all about. It's about leisure. It's about going out there and experiencing the adventurous life. And in order, to illustrate that, we're down here at ADV Leisure in Pretoria East, purveyors of some fantastic watercraft, leisure vehicles, bikes, trailers, you name it, they've got you covered. So let's see how this one behaves in a typical leisure situation. The interior of the new Ranger Wildtrak is a very special place. It's fitted with some really nice premium feeling materials. Leather bound, of course, orange stitching, very wild track. There's this short little e-shifter as part of the design, but it's all been redesigned. It's squared off and flat and boxy, but there's beautiful design detail elements like these air vents that mimic the front grille. You've got this large 12 inch portrait orientated SYNC 4A infotainment system, and it's a powerhouse, it really is. It has a great resolution. It's a little tricky to get used to, but you get used to it soon enough. There's storage all over the place, cubby hole at the top, cubby at the bottom. Uh, there's cup holders that pop out from the side, and of course, tons of storage space. They've maximized the storage space, and of course, the convenience features all in a very practical way. So there's storage placed down here as well as wireless charging. You've got wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, but you can tether it as well with USB-A and C. Rather nice. I like the way that it has all been fitted and finished. It feels premium and it 
doesn't feel like a Ford. There's been some questionable build quality in the past, but not with this one. And especially when you think that this is locally built, it's very, very impressive. Let's dive into this infotainment system a little bit. You do get a Bang & Olufsen sound system, which sounds really, really good. Could do with a little more power though. Of course, as I say, it's got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but they've moved a lot of the controls into this infotainment system. You've got physical interaction buttons for the climate control, dual zone climate control, but audio functions, that's all there or here. So they haven't overcomplicated the way that BMW does, giving you 32 different ways to interact with it. A quick press of the button brings up your settings screen. And from there, you've got your camera. It has a 360 degree camera with a variety of different angles that you can choose from. You've also got your towing assistance program. You can control the zone lighting. You can monitor your off-road status. And you can change a whole host of other settings. By the way, it does have park assist. So if you're a little concerned about the sheer size of a wild track, don't worry. It can do both perpendicular and parallel parking for you. That's rather handy. I like it. I love the way that it feels in here. It's stylish. I, I, I can't really fault it. But we're down here at ADV for a reason. Because this vehicle is so capable and because it's a leisure vehicle, we're going to put it to the test. We're grabbing one of their boats. It's not a particularly heavy one, but it's going to give us an idea of how the Ranger tows. And it's going to put all those towing programs through the ringer. Okay, hold up. Before we do that, let's get a feel for the Ranger Wild Track before we start towing. The tech fest continues when you climb on board and start driving because the Ford Ranger Wild Track has a comprehensive array of both safety and driver assistance systems, many of them for the first time in a Wild Track. Seven airbags look after you and your passengers. It has ABS, EBD, uh, emergency brake assist, as well as an evasive steer assist. There's rear cross traffic alert and reverse braking. It doesn't only have lane departure warning, but it's got a lane departure assist as well. Very handy. It's got edge detection, so it's going to detect the edge of the road. It's also got adaptive cruise control, but it's got a stop and go function. And that stop and go function means that when you sit in traffic, well, it's going to bring the vehicle down to a complete stop without disengaging. And then when it moves again, well, it's going to get the Ranger Wild Track moving again as well. Sometimes you need to intervene with a button, but not the end of the world. This Ford Ranger Wild Track is the 3 litre V6 version. It makes 184 kilowatts and 600 newton meters of torque. Now Ford claims that that will return a combined cycle fuel consumption of 8.4 liters, but we're sitting and hovering around mid tens with a fair amount of highway driving. As soon as you start towing, that number of course increases. The Ford Ranger Wildtrak 3 litre V6 also uses the 10 speed gearbox. Now this is a very clever gearbox and it has the ability to gear hop so it can go from second to fifth or sixth if need be and vice versa depending on the situation. You don't really feel those changes. It's silky smooth and it keeps you in that power band. It also helps with the efficiency. It sends all of this power to all four wheels. But the big takeaway from this drive is how comfortable it is. Previous ranges have felt like you really need to put a bit of weight in the load bin just to get that rear suspension settled. That's not the case here. You see, the Ford engineers have taken the T6 chassis and they've modified it ever so slightly. They've moved the suspension mounting points. So the front suspension has been moved forward by 50 millimeters and the track has been widened a bit. At the rear, they've taken the shock absorbers from inside the chassis legs and move them outwards, which gives you a lot more room in the cabin, especially at the rear, and it gives you a larger bin at the back. By moving these suspension points outwards and lengthening it a little bit, it's given the Ranger Wild Track a fantastic presence on the road. It genuinely is super comfortable, even without a load. This rides phenomenally well, and that's not something I ever thought I would say behind the wheel of a Ford Ranger. 
And it's not only the wild trap, this applies to the entire Ranger range. As great as it is on road, it's just as great here off road. Gravel roads and genuine off road, the wild track really does excel. Those changes to the suspension mounting points mean that there's a reduced approach angle and a reduced departure angle. And while the wheelbase has been lengthened, it still has a 22 degree breakover angle, which is wonderful. Six different drive modes are available. So you can choose from gravel, loose stuff, rain, eco, whatnot. But it's the drivetrain itself that has also really changed. Ford has done away with the traditional 4x4 in the Wildtrak versions and you get an electronically controlled permanent all-wheel drive. This rotary dial down here allows you to select from 2 high, 4 high, 4 low and 4 auto. I've got it in 4 auto here and it's automatically going to work out where the power needs to be. Does it need to be on the front wheels? Does it need to be on the back wheels? I was going to adjust it on the fly automatically. And this also means that you can leave it in place and you can drive along and even if you do hit a high traction surface like a tarmac road, it's going to figure it out automatically and you don't have to worry about not having switched it across. So far, so good. But I'm still keen to see what it's like to tow with the Ford Ranger Wildtrak. Let's head back to ADV and hook up that boat. So in the Ranger Wildtrak, it makes life really easy to hook up a trailer. The assistance systems also just need to know what sort of trailer it is. So we head over to towing and no active trailer. So we can choose one from the list or we can add a trailer. Let's add this one. And this is going to be boat. Cool. Boat, 7.6 meters. We are sitting at 8.1 meters now. It is 2.2 meters wide, and there we go. 8.1 meters long, 2.2 meters wide. We're going to confirm it, and we've selected it. Now they give us a connection checklist. All right, connect and lock ball coupler. Then make sure all electrical connections are complete. Cross and connect safety chains. Connect the emergency breakaway switch, and then trailer light check. So let's fire it up. Now I'm not one to tow much. I said boat is my active trailer. Yes. All right. The reason why we put a boat or the parameters of the trailer into the settings is because the vehicle will adjust the load and the size and the blind spot assist will work in conjunction with it. All right, there we go. We've got guidelines that are going to show us how we need to hook up, which means that we can do this rather neatly on our own. Let's go to our regular view then, get it a little bit closer first. We can slot it right in under that ball. This makes hooking up a trailer or a boat on your own, absolutely effortless. We put it back into park, engage the brake, and now we hop out and we go through that checklist. Now we can do the trailer light check. So let's start it up there, and then we can hop outside the vehicle and go and check that all the lights are working. It automatically activates the indicators and will cycle through the lights so that we can make sure. So it feels great without a load on it, but now we've got a load on it. We're towing a nice big heavy boat. Combined it's about 1.5 tons with the trailer. And the Ranger Wild Track is just eating it up. The increased width of the track is really making it feel stable. But I've also got 
a whole host of safety systems to make sure that towing a trailer is safe. There's load sensing braking and that's going to adjust the way that the brakes work when you're towing something rather heavy because your stopping distances of course are affected. There's trailer sway assist with rollover mitigation. So if you have happened to load the trailer a little funny, it's going to sort of sort it out, try pack it properly in the first place. But if something does go wrong or there's a heavy crosswind, something of the sorts, it's going to help rectify it by applying the brakes on the different wheels to keep you straight. Of the six drive modes, there is a dedicated one for towing, tow haul mode. That changes the torque curve and the programming of the gearbox, makes the shifts really seamless so you really don't feel them at all, but it keeps it in that torque band. Now we've been towing a little while here and the fuel consumption has taken a knock, let's be perfectly honest. You're going to expect anywhere, well, between 16s and 19s litres per 100 kilometres when you're towing. But power-wise, uphills, downhills, you can comfortably do 100, 110 kilometres an hour towing a nice heavy caravan or a heavy trailer. It really, all these safety systems have alleviated a lot of the stress of towing. When you enter in the dimensions of your trailer into the SYNC 4A infotainment system and check all the tail lights and everything that it sets you up for, it adjusts the blind spot monitoring and it's still going to monitor your blind spot despite the fact that you have a massive trailer behind you. It's not going to be constantly triggering thinking that there's somebody in your blind spot just because you're towing a trailer and I think that's some great forethought from the engineers at Ford. I've shown you the styling, I've shown you the features, I've shown you how it drives and even how it tows and I'm sure that you will join me in saying that this is a fantastic vehicle. It genuinely is good. I think this is my new favourite double cab. Ford have truly outdone themselves this time round. This Ford Ranger Wild Track 3 litre V6 with all wheel drive is going to set you back 996,500 rand. And that sounds like a lot of money because it's near as makes no difference, a million rand. And a million rand for a double cab is a lot of money. But when you think that the outgoing wild track was so close to 900,000 rand anyway, this is a lot of value for money. They have sunk about 300,000 rands worth of improvement in this model. And you're not paying even half for it. So this, I think, is a fantastic value proposition. Well done, Ford. Search Auto Trader.